The gospel is the beautiful story about how God loved us, one and all. A love that began before the world began and reaches you and me right now, right where we are, right where we need to be reached. It's like what Isaiah 41, 13 says, God holds your hand and tells you, fear not, I am the one that helps you. Or Zephaniah 3.17, God takes delight in you and quiets you with his love. And it's broader than just you and me individually. Psalm 101 begins, I will sing of your love and justice. Now we're not merely talking about the idea of justice, something cold and abstract, but about meeting the needs of people locked out and locked up by society. Yes, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoner and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. That's Luke 4 and 18. Justice is what love looks like in public. The pinnacle of this love is embodied in Jesus. God loved the world by giving God's son God gave the Son, and the Son gave his life for you and me. So wait, how did that work? Jesus was born as the long-awaited king, son of the ancient King David in the city of Bethlehem. His coming was promised, foretold in the Bible. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Micah 5, 2 says, But you, Bethlehem, Apaphra, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come from me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. But we note he wasn't born in the palace. We know that he was born in poverty, birthed in a stable, wrapped in clothes, and, and laid in a horse's trough because there was no room at the inn. A broken situation. God entered our world through the cracks, at the very bottom. And Jesus came in this way so that we could see love and justice through the eyes of a baby from the bottom. And in Ephesians 4.10, it says, from the bottom, he ascended higher than the heavens so he could lift everybody together. And from his birth, Jesus lived out faithfully what Adam didn't, and what Abraham couldn't. He fulfilled what Israel was meant to do, to reveal God's grace and justice to the world. And he was faithful to death, even death on a cross. And what is more, Living this life, Jesus fulfilled God's role by doing what only God could do. See, God wrote God's self into our story, into history like a playwright, writing himself as a character in the play. Colossians 2, 9 through 10 says, For in Christ all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. Jesus was God achieving salvation to restore the world from corruption. And on the cross, Jesus took away our moral debt. He died there with, with our sins, your sins, my sins, written onto the cross. So when we accept him, we face our consequences in him and turn back to God. The cross permanently opens our eyes to the pain of falsehood and the injustice that's in the world. On the cross, Jesus disarmed systemic powers who masquerade truth and justice, and his innocent death all the way back then showed them all to be shams. God loved the world in such a way. God gave the Son, and the Son gave his life so that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. This is good news. Good news for the world. Good news for me. Good news for you, if you want it, and believe in him. I mean, really trust him with your life and your lifestyle.
your living. This is the gospel.